Welcome everyone to Wasco's Comedy Shack. Actually, this is West of Loathing and this is Gary. Hey Gary, what are goblin jokes like? Do you know any good ones? Oh, knowing very funny joke. A goblin to entering human bar and a human bartender to say hello. We do not serve a goblin. And the goblin to sing? Of course not, you are full of juices. Very funny pun. Probably not translating very well. Well, I suppose we're not so good at understanding goblin jokes, so let's see if he'll tell us some human jokes. Hey, welcome back. Ready for some great A hilarious jokes? Alright, hit me. Okay, so a skeleton walks into a bar. And the bartender says, wait, it's a horse, not a skeleton. Sorry. Anyway, after that, the bartender asks the horse, Hey, why is your face so long, buddy? Uh, okay. Wanna hear another one? Alright, a guy walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Sorry, we don't serve goblins here. Oh wait, I forgot to mention, the guy is a goblin. Anyway, um, the end. Oh, come on, Wasco. Wasco takes a bow. Ex <laughs> Gary the Goblin tells better jokes than you. I don't think we want to pay him any more than we already have. No, go away. That's enough terrible jokes. Um, we're gonna go to Halloway's hideaway with a ghostly shrieking moo. A cow skull wreathed in its own personal blizzard of freezing wind and shards of ice swoops towards you. Inasmuch as it's possible to ascribe an emotional state to it, you'd guess that emotion to be upset. Let's defend ourselves. We don't take any bullying f up Okay, never mind. There's no defense necessary. We're dead right away. All right. Uh, <laughs> you got frostbitten into unconsciousness. Also regular bitten. Huh. That wasn't... that wasn't very great, but we arrived at our destination nonetheless, thanks to our wonderful horse, Sombra. Thank you. Looks to be some sort of shop. Actually, no. Let's talk to Gary first. Yes, here being a crazy squirrel man. There does seem to be a lot of squirrels around here. He is a squirrel shop. You mean he sells squirrels? What for? No, selling two squirrels. Hmm. <laughs> Ah, uh, howdy. Name's Halloway. Hab Halloway. Sorry for the chittering. I ain't. Sorry for the chittering. I ain't seen another person in a long time. That's not surprising. This place is pretty secluded. What do you do here? Mostly, I sell pine cones to squirrels. He frowns. Well, I used to. Huh? <laughs> well, alright. Uh, what happened? Well, one day they were here, and the next day they were bloodstains. I had the creepiest dream that night. I dreamt a little girl with big empty white eyes jumped into- Oh dear, oh dear, oh Jesus Christ. Jumped in through my bedroom window and asked me if I wanted to have a tea party. Uh, let's talk about something else. So, the reason that my character is so hesitant to discuss this is because that little girl he was talking about, she's real, and we're the ones who set her free off camera. And she's completely evil, and this is terrible. <laughs> Let me know what you're selling. Oh. Ooh, clip on bow tie. You'd never wear this, but maybe you'll find a child that needs help getting ready for a funeral. That definitely sounds like something that would happen out west. I'd be interested in that. I mean, not a funeral, but you know, just obtaining a bow tie. I wish I could wear it. So we found out that that evil, ghostly little girl killed all his squirrels. Um, is there anything we can do about that, or is that just... <laughs> is that just a tangential consequence that has no bearing on the main plot? Because if so, I, I, I would feel really bad, because I just ruined that guy's life. He had this amazing bond with squirrels, and I just took that away from him. Turned them all into bloodstains. I'm having a bad time today. Alright, don't worry about this. We're having a good time. I swear. <laughs> All right, we're at the abandoned mine, and I'm not sure what's happening here. This dry washer is caked in dirt. What's a dry washer? I feel like I should know this. Oh, okay, that's nice. We got some meat. Uh, there's a shiny thing. Strange silvery crystal. Why don't we take a look? 
This crystal is silver in the sense that it's silver colored, but not silver in the sense that it is not made of silver. Thanks for the distinction that I, I didn't really need. The oil workings are too rusty to work. Let's loose them a little, align it, and write it down. I don't suppose Gary is gonna come with us. He usually is too chicken to come, and I don't blame him. He's a sweet, sweet creature. I would not ever want any harm to befall him. Oh, hello, snakeos. Gonna have to fight these snakes to get through here. Oh boy. So they do do quite a bit of damage, and I'm kind of worried. Oh. And rightfully so, I'm pretty much dead at this point. I wonder if we can survive- Okay. I thought that was my bean shield. My bad. Of course we can't survive this. So they progress to the next day. That's not a huge deal. Uh, maybe we'll ask Gary for something we can handle for once. Hooray, your eyes looking much better. Yeah, yeah, they, they looked better last episode. Get with the program, Gary. Yeah, they're looking much better too. What? <laughs> Never mind, let's get after that Emperor Norton guy. So I guess Gary doesn't understand human jokes. Or maybe I'm just I'm just really bad at being funny. That could also be the case. We're gonna do some breadwood quests because we never finished helping the mayor. I think we owe him that much. He did lend us a bunch of lumber for the railroad and I feel indebted to him. Hello, sir. Did you manage to get that logging permit yet? Not yet. Mayor glances at the list of problems. All right, let's let's help. Take a look at that problem board. Let's see. Oh, maybe we only have one left. Missing mail. Our last batch of mail never got here. We don't know if something happened to the mailman or what. Go talk to Reginald in the bunkhouse. He used to be a mailman, so he can tell you where to start your search. All right, you got it. Where is Reginald and wait? Where is the bunkhouse? This is the bunkhouse. All right. Hello, are you Reginald? Oh, this guy seems very focused on his beard growing. Yeah, I imagine it would take a lot of concentration to will your beard to be that long. Howdy, are you Reginald? Who the... Who the... Are you? Name's Jesse McCree. Mayor's got me investigating some missing mail. Said you could give me a line on where to start looking. Oh, yeah, alright. I gave up being a mailman a couple years ago, but I doubt they've changed the system much. All the mail headed here used to go through a way station just southeast, southwest of Loathing, of here. I'll mark it on your map. You discovered a new map location, Postal Way Station. Halloway's pin. Ooh, what is this? A silver lapel pin in the shape of a mining pick with... Jumble neck mine one year anniversary inscribed on the haft. This item goes on your lapel. That's neat. I found your um your lapel pin, but I'm I'm gonna keep it, okay? Alright, take care. It says postal service property, no trespassing. Well, why don't we just go and trespass? Why is there an outhouse in the log cabin? You don't even want to know what bureaucratic processes were involved in the placement of this outhouse. <laughs> Alright, ooh, let's go through these old newspapers. This cabinet is full of maps, but you have no idea what any of them mean. Maybe you could ask about it at the post office in Dirtwater. Okay, sure. Alright, can we read the mayor's mail? Or Roy Bean's mail? Hmm. Alright, it's delivered addressed to his house of justice and jelly beans, so I suppose we're not gonna be too big of a snoop. We're just gonna respect his privacy like a good little citizen of the wild wild west. I kind of adopted a western accent there when I didn't mean to. I think this game is really getting to me and I'm kind of concerned, but not really. We're just gonna- oh, we, we traveled to the wrong location. That's not great, but okay. There's an El Vibrato machine. Did you not notice that I was in the process of delivering mail? I'm extremely, incredibly, super duper ultra busy right now and you're not making my life any easier. Why don't you do us all a favor and go down so that I don't have to deal with your BS? Okay, I I'm completely calm. Don't get me wrong, I am very calm. I'm just, I'm just a little frustrated because I don't have all the time in the world. I need to like... It's, it's like 10 p.m. and I need to get to Roy Bean's house. It's just a lot of things to deal with, okay? I found this letter addressed to you. I don't remember his, his voice, so, you know. A letter? <laughs> 
He hand over the letter, he opens it, reads it, snorts derisively, and tosses it into the fireplace behind him. Thanks anyway. That's his new voice, by the way. Howdy, Jesse. Thanks again for helping me get back all my jelly beans. Okay, I'm I'm thoroughly creeped out. I shouldn't record at this time of day. <laughs> Gary has been our best friend, our most valuable guidance counselor. Where should we go? Oh jeez, I completely forgot I was looking for the missing mail. What am I even doing? <laughs> oh my gosh, what would I do without Gary? Hello, Mayor of Redwood. Did I find the mail? Did I find the missing mail? I didn't find the missing mail. Oh boy, I'm starting to get worried now because I don't know what to do. Gary, save me. You know, I was gonna give up on this quest, but we've spent way too many episodes just giving up on them. So this time, I'm gonna do this properly. So after you get the info from here and you talk to the dude that we just talked to a little, a little bit back, we got the hint to go back to Dirtwater Post Station and talk to that lady. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Here we go. I didn't know that she was a lady. I thought this was a man. I'm so sorry. Hello. I need some help tracking down some missing mail. How do you mean? What kind of intonation was that? A mail delivery went missing on the way to Breadwood, and I'm hunting it on behalf of their mayor. The local mail station has a bunch of route maps, but I don't know which one I need. Hmm, well that information ain't exactly secret, but I ain't supposed to just give it out either. A delivery going missing is bad news though. I suppose it's alright just this once. Wait here a sec. Okay, so each map has a code number on it, you see? Based on region and direction of travel. She explains how to work out the code you need and gives you a cheat sheet for reference. Alright, that's great. Postal code sheet. That was a struggle to read, alright. <laughs> this should help you find the right map at the Postal Service way station. Alright, so what we want to do now is head back to... Where is it? Postal way station. Welcome back to the Postal way station. Now, this time we get the option to search through this cabinet. You use the cheat sheet and follow the map. You discovered a new map location, Chuck's house. Ooh, hmm, something about this house makes you suspicious. You can't quite put your finger on it. The place looks perfectly normal after all, but you can't shake the feeling that there's something very wrong going on here. Maybe you're just being paranoid. I mean, does the fact that there's a noose outside mean anything? <laughs> Probably just one of those bird feeders where you hang up a bowl of suet and seeds and stuff. Except the bird seed at all, so it's just the, you know, the rope. <laughs> Yeah, totally not a noose. Don't worry about it. A cellar door, man. I bet it's all kinds of horror down there. Like some kind of medieval torture dungeon. Oh boy. Let's not go down there. Hmm. Should we knock? I feel like that's a bad decision. If, if you know, if you're suspicious, you don't want to notify people that you're here. There's also some unmarked graves here. I don't feel like that's a good sign, but hey, you know, if he was trying to hide the bodies, I guess he wouldn't mark them at all. The door creaks open and you step inside the house. The interior is an absolute nightmare. The walls are covered in rusty chains and hooks, as well as a variety of wicked looking knives and shears. A man of indeterminate age and slightly hunched posture grins widely as you enter, his eyes gleaming. He's standing near a large puddle of blood on the floor. Awesome. Hello, my name is Chuck. Welcome to my little blood and breakfast. Your what? Blood and breakfast. Oh, sorry. I have a lisp. <laughs> what kind of lisp causes you to say blood and breakfast? A lisp? Yes, it makes a lewd sound like lewd. A bed and breakfast. I see. People also tell me I emphasize words oddly, but I don't get that at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> Excuse me? It's, it's literally a medieval torture chamber. All you need is, the, you know, that board where it stretches your limbs and... Okay, there's a lot of blood on the floor here. Let's ask Chuck about it. Um, I can't help but notice you have a giant pool of blood on your floor. Blood? Oh no no, I can see why you might think that, as this is certainly your blood, like blood. But this is tomato soup. 
Tomato soup? Yes, I spilled my lunch. Very clumsy of me. I was just getting started cleaning it up when you arrived. <laughs> I see. Let's take a look at his cooking station. There's a kettle, still hot, little pantry, that's cute. There's nothing very unusual, but you do notice two jars of tea leaves labeled sleep time and Earl Grape. Hmm, that, that doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> it sounds like he does. Okay, I won't say it kind of drugs people and you know, does stuff. This is a large collection of steel chains and hooks, as well as knives, shears, and other bladed implements. Everything is covered with rust, or possibly dried blood, or possibly both. You know, I don't feel like it's very sanitary, even if it was for cooking food. Like, either, you know, your, your, your meal gets tetanus, or you eat rust, neither of which are very pleasant. Aha, you've noticed my collection. Yeah, it's uh, very dramatic. It all belonged to my father and his father before him. They were butchers. And you? <laughs> I do a little bit, but not professionally. I broke with family tradition to run my little blood and breakfast. Now let's go through here. Oh, sorry, that's private. That's my blood room. <laughs> You're what now? My blood room, my bedroom. Alright, gotcha. You know, this guy has such a weird lisp. <laughs> Chuck is staring at you. You notice that his left eye has a tendency to drift sideways as he stares and then resets when he blinks, which is not often enough. Let's have a little chat. Hey, excuse me? Yes, how can I help you? You said you're running a bed and breakfast here? That's what I said, yes. Ah, uh, could I have a look at the guest room? It's in the cellar, but I'm afraid it's unavailable at the moment. My last guest has only just checked out, and I still need to clean up the mess. Oh, that's not, that's not worrying at all. What's on the menu? Homemade sausages and tomato soup. I also have a special tea blend so that's a real knockout. What kind of sausages? That sounds... that intrigues me. Long pork sausages. My grandfather's own recipe. Okay, okay, I, I think we all know what long pork is. Let's not pretend. <laughs> That's right, I make them longer than regular pork sausages. They're more filling that way. I'm sorry if this intonation is really annoying. I mean, personally, I'm annoyed, but... This is puzzling and uncomfortable for many different reasons. Well, you said it, Jesse. You mentioned a special tea blend? I do like tea every now and again. Yes, a special herbal blend that puts my guest right to sleep. It's very effective. Huh? Well, we'll just gloss over that. Has a mailman been by recently? Why, yes, my last guest was a mailman. Such a nice fellow. It's a shame he's no longer with us. I hope you just mean that he left. I like to think he'll always be here. In spirit. Alright, thanks. Um, um, I would like to leave right now. Um, you have a good day, sir. Hope your your blood and breakfast runs runs well. Hope you have a successful business. I I'd like to leave now. Goodbye. Let's go. Okay. Well, it turns out um being a big coward lady isn't gonna isn't gonna help the situation. So we're gonna man up, be brave, and check out what I'm about to do. We're gonna switch the labels. You surreptitiously swap the labels. Chuck doesn't seem to have noticed. Maybe because he has that lazy eyes. He's probably just drifted off. Oh, then anyways, anyways, we switch the teas. Let's see if he can serve us some tea and you know get bamboozled. Oh, that reminds me. I left the kettle on. The water should be boiled by now. Would you care for a cup of tea? Uh, no thanks. <laughs> I'm good. Chuck pours himself a cup of tea and sits at it while staring at you. After a bit, he starts to look drowsy. Oh my, I'm coming over all sleepy. Perhaps I should get my chlut down for a few minutes. It has been a long day. Please excuse me. 
Okay, well, let's see if we can go into this back room. Oh, whoopsies. Ew, <laughs> nice tiptoeing animation. Can we steal the key off of him? Guess it might be in his dresser. All right, so let's steal this key and get into the basement. We'll find out what's going on here, get to the bottom of this freaky post postal theft mystery. Hmm, doesn't look nearly as horrific down here as you expected. Unless you're particularly horrified by an unmade bed. Oh, that's exactly my worst fear. Books left by previous guests. See if there's anything good. Ooh, that's a lot of great books. I'm hyped. Let's grab this blank postcard. We've got so many postcards. And the missing bag of mail. Alright, so apparently Chuck hasn't done anything nefarious down here. He's just, uh, he's just a bit of a creepo. As you're climbing out of the cellar, a mailman approaches you. Oh, thank goodness. You found my mail. This mailbag was yours? Yeah, I've been stressed out lately, so I took a day off and rented a room here for a sort of mini vacation and now I have a completely different voice and accent, don't worry. Chuck's a great guy, yeah, a little weird I guess, but real personable. And his cooking is great. The tomato soup and those great big sausages, his tea did wonders for my insomnia too. Aww, apparently he's a real sweet guy. Okay, I'm sorry I misjudged Chuck. Did seem pretty effective. Anyway, I forgot my mailbag and I wasn't sure where I left it, so I've been retracing my steps for ages. Thanks for finding it. Sure, no problem. Here you go. The mailman walks away with the bag over his shoulder, whistling a cheerful tune. Well, that's sorted, <laughs> I guess. Do you get the pun? That'd be really awkward if you didn't get the pun, because then I, w I, just, I just laughed like a total weirdo. Alright, let's head back to Bradwood, see if the mayor's forever grateful to us. Hello, how do you feel about the mail problem? Any sign of that missing mail? Of course! Excellent, I hope there's a new- Oh, I, I forgot his voice. Excellent, I hope there's a new issue of Mayor's Monthly. Sounds informative. Mayor glances at the list of problems posted- There's more problems? <sighs> this is ridiculous. You read the list of Breadwood's problems. Stalled logging permit. Whole swaths of forest are still standing and we can't chop them down. Bad lumber deal. We're giving lumber to the railroad company for like no meat at all and that's bad. <laughs> Last time a mayor let this list get over three items, we chased him out of town with his breadstick nailed to the top of his head. That sounds painful. Excuse me? Whoops, I just I just jumped into more dialogue with Gary, but hey, we love the guy. Hello, a town. This place has seen better days. I guess towns come and go. Oh, a nomadic lifestyling? But these houses are looking a heaviness. What? No, 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 no. Just the people move away. They leave the houses here. They are wasting a perfectly good houses. Well, it is, he's not wrong, but you know, he's not right either. Alrighty, my friends, this will be the end of the episode. Thank you for joining me in my quest to help the mayor, and next time we will finish our job. But we will finish helping the mayor by getting back his building permit, which these ghostly dudes have, have, you know, kept away from him. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya, unless you're Gary. I would totally be Gary, but only for a day. I wouldn't want to be Gary forever, you know? That'd just be too much. Hmm.